say that I enjoyed the movie very much. Thank you. Uh, very simple question. Do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> <laughs> and um, do you believe they come back to haunt you if you do horrible things? <coughs> um, the answer to that is yes, I do believe in ghosts. Um, I believe in spirits. I believe in spirits. Um, whether or not I can see them, I don't know, but I know they exist. Um, but I'm not frightened of them. I don't think ghosts and spirits are frightening things. They're, they're, they're just souls in limbo, you know, for whatever reason, I don't know. But, you know, they're, they're not frightening at all. Um, sorry, your second question was, do they come back to, to haunt us, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I believe in karma, okay? And, and I believe that if you do something bad in life, you know, it will come back to haunt you. You know, uh, it may not come back in the form of a ghost or a spirit, but it'll come back to haunt you. And if it doesn't come back to haunt you in this life, it'll certainly come back to haunt you in your next life or in your afterlife. Um, yeah, it's definitely believe in karma. Yeah. Yeah, my question is, uh, do you uh, how is it? So, sorry, um, sorry, uh, just to follow up on the other question on, on values. Um, <coughs> just like Jack Neal who became famous after his first movie mm -hmm. and uh, someday when you become really famous uh, what are the things that will hold you back to your convictions and not to have the success uh, cause you to go another way and uh, what, what would be your convictions of, of doing something like that that will help open up the eyes of the uh, younger generation of Singaporeans mm -hmm. uh, to be able to uh, take a stand and to express themselves. Mm. <coughs> um, well, uh, I'm not sure how to answer that except to say that um, you know I, I don't make films every year. It took me 10 years to make my second film because I don't think I've got I don't think I've got a lot of things to say which are so original or which are so amazing, you know. But when I do have something to say which has not been said, then I have to make the film. But, so it took me 10 years to make this film because I had, was living in London for 20 years. I came back and I just wanted, I came back in 2000 and I just wanted to hear the stories of my fellow Singaporeans whom I had not heard for the past 20 years. My first film, Forever Fever, is a document of my teenage years growing up in Singapore in 1978. Singapore was a wonderful, wonderful place to grow up in in the 60s and 70s. And I wanted to document that in my film, my first film, Forever Fever. Um, um, and, and that's why uh, when you go outside later, I, I'm selling my DVDs as um, a, a two-box set because um, Forever Fever was about Singapore before modernization. This is, is a, my document of Singapore today. So when I came back in 2000, I, I took time to listen to stories of my friends, of taxi drivers, a lot of taxi driver stories in this film. Um, uh, and, and you know, just, just to listen to, to stories of my fellow Singaporeans. And, um, and finally, after 10 years, I felt, yes, I have something I want to say which needed to be said and I made this film. Um, I think that's what drives me as an artist. I don't know whether I'll make another film for another 10 years. Um, I, I still have something that, that I feel needs to be said, which no one else is saying, or to say something which has been said, but in a different pers with a different perspective, or in a fresher and more contemporary way, then I, I will do it. But, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I think I have I have, I, have, I have some very close friends who will make sure that I don't lose that integrity um, and I, I, I hold very very fiercely to that uh, so, so I, I, I'm not sure I, I, I mean I'm, I'm not really I mean I don't think most artists create for fame or fortune they create because there's something to say and um, I, I, I hope I'll continue to be like that I think this gentleman in front had a question and then after that we'll take one last one, so please um, take your chance. Yeah, I would like to ask, uh, I've not seen this movie in cinema, so and being here, uh, 
mainstream here is uncut version. So mm. what are the scenes that have been cut? Is it the naked scene or towards the end? And my question is that what what's the significance of that naked scene? Is, is it is there something I would say, is it a naked truth or or you want something shocking at the end? Yeah, no, it's, it's a very simple. Oh. I mean, because the last image of her uh, before she dies, she's in the swimming pool, bathtub, right? Yeah. So of course, when she appears as, as Rose in his mind, oh. of course she's just, she come up in the bathtub, uh. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, and and hence, you know, yes, I mean, some people, some of my some of my friends say, oh, why why must she be fully naked? It's, it's as simple as that. She was fully naked in the bathtub, so when she comes out, she's also fully naked. It's as simple as that. It's not that there's nothing very much more to that. Um, as to what scenes they cut, you know that scene in the spiral staircase where Adrian Pang is, you know, doing doing his thing to his China girlfriend. They cut that. Don't ask me why. They said there was some thrusting movement, so we cannot show thrusting <laughs> movement, even though it's fully close. Can you imagine? Yes, that's what they cut. Right. Um, the more that I listen to what you have been saying, the more impressed I am from the amount of time to, it takes to write script to uh, big names from big production. And I do have a question that you were saying that um, in French there are this person who comes up to you and is very interested, mm. but it's her when she knew that it was in English. English. Mm. So in your next film, we don't know who I'm, but would it be in another language <coughs> to appeal to the mass market? Well, you know, I had this th th problem with my first film, Forever Fever. Forever Fever was was a film, you know, a Singapore film, but it was done in Singlish. Or, or it was done in, in English, but with more Singapore accent. And a lot of people said, you know, why did you do it in that accent? Because, you know, when it was sold to Miramax in America, you know, Miramax read up the whole thing. You know, so you know, am I limiting my audiences and my sales by choosing that that language? It was great difficulty selling that film, even though it did very well. Um, this film again, same problem. Everyone saying, "Oh, I should have done it in Chinese. I should have," you know, like I can't. I can't. I have to be truthful and honest to this family in the story because this family represents the elite in Singapore and the elite speak English. When I talk about the elite, I'm talking about the, the people who govern us. Okay, I, I can't do it in Chinese. It will be, it will not be real. It will not be, be truthful. You know, in Parliament, they don't speak in Chinese, they speak in English, right? So, so I, I, I mean, again, yes, I, I shot myself in the foot. No one wants to buy this film outside of, of Asia or outside of Singapore, because they think, you know, but why should I make a film just, just to cater to you know European audiences, because it won't be truthful at the end of the day. I can go, I, I can die knowing that I've been truthful in this film, even though I haven't made a single cent from making it. You know? yeah. Maybe you have answered some of the uh, my my question is, see our current world, I mean, views are very short termism, quick fix, unethical game. And you, I think from your film, I noticed that you challenged the burden of old definition. And uh, what sort of message would you want to leave behind to the audience? Through this film? Yes, yes. Oh. <coughs> well, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't like to tell you what, what to think or feel. But um, just from some audience's uh, responses to the film, uh, I mean, you know, Maybe it's about making choices in life. Maybe even as adults, you know, we, we shouldn't um, blame people or have excuses because as adults we can make choices. You know, you can make a stand. You can make a difference. We can all make a difference just by, <laughs> you know, a tick. <laughs> you know, you, you, we all can make a difference, even though it, it may be small steps. But you know, we all, you know, it, it it's. So it's, it's about that, and it's about choices that we make as adults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you a question about Mr. Lee's character? Yeah, sure. Um, I found the character quite fascinating. The ability for Mr. character. Particularly the last scene when she confronts her husband after she died. 
Was that supposed to be? Yes. Okay. In the cemetery. Yes. Was that supposed to be a reveal about who she really was out of mourning that she was like the next ghost haunting him, prolonging his hell? <coughs> Prolong his hell. Hell, hell, his hell, on a. <laughs> yes, maybe. Because she maybe. came across as such a strong yeah. man, you know, and yeah. he he didn't mm-hmm. look and react right. quite. Right. Happy to see that. <laughs> so, given his his false demeanor about denying the truth about how he dealt with his daughter-in-law, was that? Can I indulge in some intentional sure. celibacy? <laughs> you indulge Intentional celibacy directly from the person who produced the show. Actually, I, I mean, I mean, from, I mean, just from the simple point of view, you know, um, you know, behind every man is very powerful. Any powerful man is a very strong woman, right? It's simple as that, you know. Um, they're, they're they're both they're both one. So, you know, he he's he's a he's a wandering ghost, so is she. You know, she's as culprit as as he is. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, I mean uh, the fact that he has this expression of horror, he sees uh, that's just a little joke, no? <laughs> you know. That's just a, 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 a funny gag. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was just explaining like, what I was doing. <laughs> 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 you can take one last one by from the lady in the middle. Do you feel more confident making this second film as opposed to your first? And does it show, do you think? And what kind of um, sensibilities and techniques do you transfer over from theatre that you are more familiar with? Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I think every film is difficult. Uh, it's like giving birth; it's like childbirth. Um, it doesn't get easier. I don't think it does. <laughs> you know, um, every birth is painful. Um, you may at least know how to, what to expect, but it's still painful, right? On your second and third birth. So um, that's to answer your first question. Um, it, it's, it's it's tough. It's very very difficult. Sorry, does it get easier? It, it gets easier only that maybe perhaps you get you are more confident, you know, with the choices that you make and making decisions. But um, it's it's yeah, and, and and you're older and you're more more mature. Um, perhaps when you're directing actors. Um, it, it becomes easier in that sense, you know, practice makes perfect, just continue, you know, making short films, films, theatre, which is what I do, you know, I, I just constantly working and, um, and, and, and working with actors, a collaborative group of people, creative people, um, so it gets easier in that sense, but nevertheless, um, it's, it's painful. <laughs> Um, your your second question is okay. What what are the things I bring from theatre to to um, to film? Um, maybe it's a bit too obvious in this film because obviously I've made it very theatrical, and I know a lot of my critics have said it's too theatrical. You know why is it so theatrical? That well, I'm I'm, I'm theatre person, you know, and 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 the fact that it is not meant to be it's not meant to be tongue in cheek. You know, do you know what I mean? I mean, all, all the humorous bits and all that, you know, it's, it's a ghost for goodness sake. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not, it's, I'm playing with two parallel dimensions here, you know, it's you're not, you're not meant to really take it that seriously. Um, so yes, I use a theatrical convention because, because the premise is theatrical. So I, I, I the way I staged it, you know, the, the way I, I film it, it, it is very, very theatrical. Um, I borrow a lot from Brecht. Brechtian theories of theatre, which I, uh, and, and alienation, which um, which I love, you know, you, you can a- alienate the audience so they don't feel so involved like you do in a Hollywood film. You know, you, a Hollywood film you're on a roller coaster ride and you get so involved in, that, you're, in your characters, and the, but then when the film ends, you just leave the cinema and you get all the fun. Um, so so yes, I I I I, I use that that sort of thing behind my uh, head when I was making this film. Um, to, to, to alienate you, but also to hopefully hold up a mirror to society. 
All right, thank you very much for all your questions. Um, and if you still want to talk to me, then it'll be outside. I'll um, uh, just do a little plug here. Um, uh, I, I've just uh, released the DVDs, so, um, and they're not for sale anywhere except outside or on web, my website, www.thebluemansion.com. Um, if you enjoy the film or if you think your friends or family or overseas friends may enjoy it, please buy or help.